everyone. Hope you're doing well. This is the Deep Dive. My name is Drew Creekmer. I'm the Director of Advisory Services here at Creekmer Wealth. And I'm joined today by John Creekmer, our founder and senior wealth advisor. And John, we're talking about everyone's favorite topic today, and that is taxes. <laughs> and I say that very tongue in cheek, of course. You know, everyone loves, I guess there's some things in life worse than paying taxes, uh, such as making no money. Um, but that being said, we always want to, we're always told, you know, to render under Caesar what is Caesar's. We're never told to give them a penny more. And so what I mean by that is that, that the Internal Revenue Code is actually written in a way for each one of us to make some choices and some decisions that involve trade-offs. And those trade-offs can greatly influence the amount of money we pay in taxes in current years and in future years. Now, keep in mind, Drew, we're talking about some tax reduction strategies, not tax avoidance. And so if you folks are engaging in tax avoidance, you may have a tax law named after you. Uh, that's never a good thing to have. So you'll know that when it comes to getting tax uh, reduction strategies from us, it's always going to be here's some legal ways to decrease uh, some of the dollars you're paying taxes. And Drew, a lot of the code has changed over the years. And yeah. so there's a lot of folks who do a lot of loopholes, what was called a loophole, a lot of those have been closed. And so uh, if you're a W-2 earner, a lot of it is saying, hey, uh, we can't get rid of taxes. Let's try to find ways to minimize those taxes moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. And John, one of those big changes occurred back in 2016, uh, which ultimately there's a number of changes, but the big ones were interest uh, tax rates were dropped and tax brackets were widened. Um, now those are set to sunset here in 2026. And so as it relates to tax planning, what are some of the big strategies that we've seen uh, that over the last 10, eight years or so, uh, we've been doing in clients' accounts and important for people to keep in mind as we get close to that sunset of those tax uh, changes? Yeah, so a lot of it is you're walking through and you're trying to forecast out what your taxes are now um, based upon the rates and brackets and what's available to you and what will it be at different future dates. And so the two things to keep in mind is we have tax deferral, uh, which is the ability to defer paying taxes for a period of time. But then we also have strategies that are trade-offs that you can work on to actually decrease the amount of taxes that you pay. And so whenever you do that, you have to say, do I want to decrease or do I want to defer? And ultimately, each one of them does impact the total amount that you owe. And so when we're looking at things, we know in 2026, we're going back to what the tax brackets and rates were at the very least in 2016, 2017 timeframe. So when you look at those, um, you have really a window of opportunity of which you can go through and make some decisions to say, hey, maybe I want to accelerate uh, certain incomes right now. Um, and in doing that, I have the ability to pay a lower income tax or get dollars into a lower bracket. Now, we say they're going to increase, and so we're going to go from 10 to 12 to uh, you know, 22, 24. Everything's going up by 2 to 3 percentage points. And so we're going back up from 24 to 28%, from 22 to 25%. We're going from you know 10% to 12%, from 12 to 15 And so if we can get dollars, you can save yourself 2 or 3 percentage points. Um, but the other thing you want to keep in mind is that we're going to see the brackets changing. So you're going to have more dollars. They're going to be taxed at... Uh, higher brackets in the future. So in doing that, it makes sense to say, hey, maybe we can accelerate some dollars, uh, especially if you're retired right now. Yeah, and so um, and even not retired, Drew, you can have some acceleration strategy on that also. Um, and so there's definitely some ways to shift dollars around as far as what years are taxed in. Yeah, absolutely. And John, you know, one of our favorite things that we've been doing the last number of years with clients um, is for folks who maybe are charitably minded or approaching their RMD age, uh, that's obviously changed. It used to be 70 and a half. Now 73 is the required minimum distribution age. Um, but one of those things is having the ability to actually give your RMD directly to a charitable organization and avoid paying taxes. Uh, and so we have a lot of folks that don't necessarily need that RMD to live on to meet their living expenses. Uh, but this is a good way to give in a tax efficient manner and help an organization you're passionate about but also keep more cash in your bank account uh, that you maybe would have given otherwise. And so that's absolutely one of our favorite ways to maybe reduce those taxes up front. Uh, John, what is another one of your favorite uh, tools to help folks achieve various goals from both a tax standpoint, but also just a broader life goal standpoint? You know, I think that um, you really talked about a couple of things. Don't forget the second part of that question, Drew. Um, yeah. But really the first part, you talked about um, doing what's called the qualified charitable distribution. 
And so if you're of RMD age, required minimum distribution, we get to pull funds out of your IRA. We have a lot of clients that are charitably minded and still give money to those churches or parishes or additional charities that are near and dear to them. Um, but they don't have the itemized deductions that they need to be able to write off that contribution uh, as far as against their income. If you do a qualified charitable distribution, then what happens is the dollar comes out of your IRA and it goes to the charity and then it doesn't show as income on the front side of your tax form. The reason why that's significant is the same dollar amount can go to the not-for-profit, but the reason why it's significant is that lowers the entire amount of taxable income and also your modified adjusted gross income. And so therefore, that the amount of qualified charitable distribution is not factored into calculations for how much of your Social Security income is taxed nor does it factor in for your Medicare taxation. As far as with your medical insurance or receiving tax incentives, um, you can actually still keep those incentives as long as you st structure the RMD as far as your qualified charitable distribution. So, And so that's one of those things that kind of, that's sort of a stealthy tax that might catch up to you. It's the extra penalties on your Medicare and Social Security taxation. And so keep that in mind, especially if you're at 70 and a half or older, uh, right now, there could be some strategies to pull money from an IRA to decrease the real tax and also the stealth tax. Now, going back to what you said about other strategies, um, we've been incorporating a lot of donor advised funds, Drew, recently. Now, we had some strong blessings, especially a lot of folks having some strong gains um, inside their technology holdings. And so you can set up a donor advised fund, which gives you the, uh, which is simply an account, it's a fund at which the donor, who is you, the client, that gives advice on what how to invest the money, uh, but also advice on where the dollars go to different charities. So a donor advised fund is an actual 501c3. Uh, we set up a Schwab or Fidelity or whoever the company may be. If you have a highly appreciated stock, you can actually transfer it into the donor advised fund. You can write off the entire amount um, as far as as a charitable contribution. Anybody, any age can do this. And then once the dollars go in there, the donor advised fund can hold that stock or it can sell it off and put it into a diversified portfolio. Creepmore Asset Management can actively manage that for you. And then at any point in time, you could actually go log in yourself and you can make a grant to any other 501c3. So a real example, um, you may have a stock that you paid $10 for. Uh, you bought NVIDIA in 2016 at $13 a share. It's now sitting around $500 a share. So you have a huge gain in there. And so maybe you invested 13 grand and now you've got uh, um, 500 grand sitting there. Um, if you sold that, you're going to have capital gains tax, potentially paying 20% on that. Or you can say, hey, I give $20,000 a year to my church. How about I move $100,000 of that NVIDIA over into the donor advised fund, receive a full deduction in that year. Um, inside of there, you can say, I'm going to sell NVIDIA. Um, so I can basically harvest that gain. There is no taxation by you. And then you simply every year you go in and have $20,000 go out to the, your church of your choice. The other 501c3, they get the same amount of money. But we, we pretty much rule out the IRS from taxing you. And so it's a great tool to use for a lot of people, regardless of age. Yeah, it absolutely is. And it's one that uh, we've seen a lot of folks uh, really enjoy using uh, to go out and help different people in their community. Uh, it's really been a blessing, I think, for a lot of people. So, John, we talked about strategies to reduce taxes, but let's kind of shift gears here and talk about uh, a deadline coming up. April 15th, roughly, is tax filing day. Uh, what are things that people need to keep in mind besides making sure you get your taxes filed by that deadline as it relates to just broader good financial planning? You know, so we have different deadlines throughout the year. And so one is April 15th and most years, unless that falls on a weekend in which you have your tax filing completed. Uh, if you file an extension, you actually can push it out uh, once or twice, which will get you into the fall of the year. And so you want to make sure you understand those timelines. Um, if you happen to have a private investment into a certain type of investment, they may give you a K-1 instead of a 1099. A lot of times those get delayed. Uh, quite honestly, I had one I got in October. Uh, and so I was still, still doing my taxes for the previous year all the way into October, which was really a pain. Um, you know, but those dates actually affect your contributions. And so if you own a small business, you actually, depending upon your retirement type of plan that you have, uh, you may have to make a contribution by March 15th or April 15th. So make sure you have those dates lined up. Um, as far as uh, contributions that you do, those need to be done by 1231 of the previous year in order to get a full deduction. 
Um, as far as on anything that you'd happen to sell, appreciated asset, really it goes based upon the calendar year. And so it affects the calendar year. As far as tax planning, Drew, uh, we see a lot of folks only consider their taxes when it comes time to fill out their tax forms. The reality is tax planning needs to happen throughout the year. Uh, we find a great time to do that really is any time between March and um, no, October, November timeframe. Uh, Want to get most of your tax planning for any year done before uh, Thanksgiving um, at the end of November. So you have time to execute. And so I'd look at those general timelines, but your tax planning should happen really all throughout the entire year. Yeah, absolutely. And just a reminder for everyone, if you would like to make a contribution for the 2023 tax year to an IRA or Roth IRA, uh, we would encourage you to get that done before April 1st. Um, after April 1st, there is no guarantees that uh, the custodian Schwab or Fidelity will get that done. Uh, so we definitely encourage you be uh, timely in doing that and try to get that done before April 1st. Additionally, one of the questions we always get are, hey, when are we going to get our 1099s? Uh, so a 1099-R, if you're taking a distribution from an IRA account um, or a 1099-INT or uh, anything related to capital gains, those begin sending out in waves at the end of January through the middle of February. Uh, most of those should be sent out to you by the middle of March at the latest. Uh, so if you've not received those by sometime in the first or second week of March, we're going to encourage you to give our office a call and we can help you get those. Um, you can, If you have a Schwab or Fidelity login, you can log in online and get those. Um, or if you're in Investment HQ, uh, you do have a vault where all of your 1099 tax forms are automatically pulled in um, from your custodians. And that is another great place to access those documents as soon as they re are released. So overall, guys, tax planning is something that we think it's a year long. Um, activity, uh, but there are a number of strategies out there that we've seen some great success for folks with. So we would encourage you, if you've not discussed those with your advisor, or if you are actively working on those tax planning items, uh, to make sure you talk with your advisor throughout the year about that. Our planning team is standing by and ready to assist however we can on that front. So guys, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to talking to you all soon. Have a good one. <music>